G'day guys, Shane here. Today I'm going to show you how I edit all my Astro photos on a mobile phone. Let's get into it. Now it doesn't matter what phone you have, it can be an Android phone, Pixel phone, iPhone, it doesn't matter. I edit the photos all pretty much the same way. Today I'm using an iPhone, let's take a photo first. Like every other video I've been doing lately, you've got a chance to win all of my presets over there on shanemosson.com. There's gonna be a code word, come along the bottom, comment the code word in the comments, and I'll pick someone randomly, and you're gonna get all the presets for free. I came down here yesterday and checked out this tree. I used photo pills to work out what time of day I need to be here to get the galactic core where I want it to be. I'm gonna use a torch or a flashlight here to set the uh, composition the way I want it to be. Just loosen off the tripod here hit the flashlight, there's the tree in the frame. It's off to the side, it's off to this side. I want to move just to the right a little bit, just so it's sitting roughly in the center of the frame. The galactic core will come down from the top right or middle top down to the left here. That's pretty much how I want that photo to be. You can see some lights in the background. That's all, I'm gonna take a photo first. You can see I've already taken one here before to test it. It's working really well. Tighten up that tripod, turn this light off, take a shot, this is what it looks like. That's the photo I want with the sky. What I want to do though is have that tree lit up. This is a silhouette photo. I want that subject to be lit up and I'm gonna use the Godox V1, the strobe, to light that from two different angles. I'll go from this side of the photo and then from this side of the photo. Never from just above the camera. I wanna get that depth of field in the photo. So I'm gonna take another photo, hit this twice. I should have a good photo. Then we'll get into editing. Well, it was a little bit of mucking around, but I got the photo that I wanted. I ended up using just a regular torch because the strobe wasn't getting the distance that I wanted to. I had the zoom on with the strobe, but it wasn't quite there. It's a really big tree, by the way, so I had to be a little bit further away from it to get the composition that I want. So I used the torch to light the trunk of the tree and the strobe to light the rest of it. It was a bit of a, bit of a run around in that 30 seconds. Now we've got the photo. I've shot Pro Raw on the iPhone. Let's go and put it into Lightroom and edit the photo. That's a pretty bloody good photo, I think. Um, we're gonna edit this photo in Adobe Lightroom. I think Adobe Lightroom is, in my opinion, the best for doing this sort of photo. There are other apps out there that will do similar things, but there's a couple of tools that are in Adobe Lightroom that I think are just, they're not negotiable for this sort of photo. Um, you can use Darkroom, it's going to get you most of the way as to where I'm going here today. Uh, but it's purely up to you. The, the choice of application that you use is purely up to you. So the seven step process that I use to edit pretty much every Astro photo that I have from a phone. First one is I'd looking at the photo and it's identifying issues that you have with the photo. So step number one is finding the problems. In When I look at this photo here, I look at uh, any distractions and that red light, that's a distraction. That's a cell tower with the uh, warning light from the cell tower. Overall, I look at the horizon to see if the horizon's flat. Um, and I look to see the color overall. So step number one for me, I'm going to have to look at that light, the color, and the horizon. Step number two is fixing those things. The horizon's flat, I'm happy with that. The color of this, I'm not happy with. I think it's a little bit too green. So I go to color, and I'm going to increase the magenta slider a little. And that there is more neutral, I think, in the color of it all. Uh, now I'm gonna find the healing tool, which is over there search into that red light or any other distraction. I'm just gonna paint that over. The AI in this application is just sensational. It finds the best uh, replacement for it, if you like, and it's gone. The horizon's flat, I'm happy with that. Step number three is the subject, and we're looking at the subject here, and the subject here is the tree. So I'm going to go to masking. This is where Adobe Lightroom really comes into its own. Hit the plus. Select subject. It's going to go down, find the subject, and I'm going to do whatever I want to do to that subject. In this case, I'm going to go to the light, increase the shadows just a little bit, increase the blacks just a little bit, and because it's a green tree, I'm gonna make it even a little bit greener. Go to color and decrease the tint just a little bit. When you're dealing with that subject, very, very minor adjustments. Hit the tick on that, and we're good to go. The step number three, or four I should say, step number four is the sky. We're gonna do a similar thing here. Go to masking, hit the plus, and select sky. The AI will go through, find what it thinks is the sky. In this case here, it struggled a little bit with the tree because of the branches and leaves and 
or a tree. Um, that's okay, I think it's not going to hurt this, this photo at all. We'll go to light and decrease the blacks. As I'm doing this, I'm watching that galactic core, that gaseous cloud there. I'm watching what happens to that. Incre I'll decrease the whites just that little bit as well. The thing with all mobile phones is the amount of haze that comes into this sort of photo. So we're going to go to effects and increase the dehaze slider. We can throw it all the way to the right and look at that galactic core. It looks amazing, but the rest of the photo has kind of gone crappy with that sort of HDR element around the tree. So we'll bring that back roughly halfway, maybe a third of the way, and I think that's pretty good. We'll hit the tick on that, and I'm happy with that so far. Step number six is the overall noise of this photo. Um, the digital noise is what I'm talking about. That's just inherent with astrophotography. If I zoom right in there, you can see a lot of noise in this photo. Apple iPhones are somewhat worse for this than most other phones. Um, so you adjust it how you see fit, depending on the device that you have. We'll go across to detail and we'll increase the noise slider. I'll zoom back in here as I'm doing that and look at what's happening to the noise. Go all the way to the right. It's probably a bit too much and those artifacts start popping out a bit too much. Let's go with about 40 or so. That's good. I want to sharpen up now that tree, the subject in the photo. So if I increase the sharpening, say halfway for the sake of this, I want to be able to mask what that just the tree. So just the mask is going to have this sharpening applied to it. So if I start increasing the masking and then touch and hold the photo, you see it turns black and white. Everything that's white in this photo right now is going to have that sharpening applied to it. Everything that's black won't have any sharpening applied to it. That's pretty good right there. The horizon's going to be sharpened, the tree's going to be sharpened, and some of the stars are going to be sharpened. Let go of that, zoom in, have a look. That looks pretty good. Um, the last thing in step number seven is the clarity in the galactic core. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll add another mask, plus again, and I'm going to go for a radial gradient this time. This one here, and slide the finger down, and I'm looking for something that's roughly the same size as that galactic core, and use those white dots to make it longer or wider, and use that white dot on the end there to turn it. I think it's a little bit too wide, I'll bring that in a little bit closer, just like that. And what I'm doing here is increasing the clarity on this slider. So go to the effects tab, increase the clarity, and that's it. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, to see the before and after, all you do is touch and hold the screen. There's the before any editing, there's the after editing, and I think that's pretty good. What do you guys think if you edit your photos on Lightroom? Um, I'd love to know if you do anything different. Put a comment down below. Other than that, guys, I'll see you next week. Catch you later.